Okay, so I've been sent another case. Uh, this time it's from Geekworm, and uh, this one's different to all the cases I've had before. Uh, it's an aluminium case, and I've had loads of aluminium cases before, but this one is definitely all about audio and about high-res audio. So this comes with this board. Uh, you can see it says music on there, and it's got a couple of phono sockets and also another 3.5mm jack, and it actually says headphone amp on there. Uh, and this just sits on the top, of the Pi, uh, and so I've got my one gig Pi that you've seen in a recent video, if you've seen that, uh, and it basically just slots together. There's nothing extra to it. It is literally that is how it connects together, and that's how it becomes a high-res music player. But because it's all about audio, they want it to be completely silent, so the heatsink on this is a solid bit of aluminium that fits on top of the Pi, uh, so there's no noise at all. Let's have a look at a few of the other bits. So there's all these standoffs that come in here and some rubber feet as well. Comes with some instructions and if you scan in the QR code it will take you to their wiki page which has got all the information on it. And there's a few extra bits on here. It's designed for the Pi 4 but you can also use it with the Pi 3 but not with the case. So the board will fit on the Pi 3 but the case won't help you. And it says on here different operating systems that work, Mood Audio Player, OSMC, Open Elec, Raspbian Jesse, Volumio, and Pi Core Player. So before I build it up, let's go through some of the specs. As it says in the start here, uh, we redesigned the DAC expansion board and tried our best to make this DAC the thinnest and matched it NUC style aluminium alloy shell. The final thickness of DAC Pi is only 31 millimeters. So it uses a high quality PCM5122 DAC chip, supports full HD audio up to 24 bit 192 kilohertz playback. Also has a high quality audio headphone amplifier, so I'll have to try that later. Uh, class leading audio, 112 decibel signal noise ratio and total harmonic distortion of 0.0019%. Sounds pretty decent. And uh, it's powered by the standard Raspberry Pi power supply. Now they do talk about, and I always get this with aluminium cases where people uh, do talk about the impact on Wi-Fi. Uh, they do say, as our test, 2.4G Wi-Fi was usable, but different Raspberry Pi individuals have different degrees of Wi-Fi interference. I don't really know how I can test the Wi-Fi. My router is in the same room, and I've not had an issue with any of the cases I've had. Um, but obviously, if you have weak Wi-Fi in the place that you're going to use it, that might affect it. You can take the heatsink off, uh, and that might improve the Wi-Fi reception a bit, but uh, I guess it's one of those things you have to try. So here's the instructions. Let's put it together. So it looks like this is very easy. So I'm going to have to take this off to start the other bit. That comes off nicely. So no tools come with this, but this kit I bought, and I've shown it in a few videos now, I've used this for loads of things since. It is absolutely brilliant. So that was difficult to get the clear bit off, and it must be this way around for the GPIO pins, and it screws from underneath. There you go, these are slightly risen, and these are sort of ordinary screws. In the picture, it looks like you've got some aluminium bits, but they don't go in there, because we've already got the aluminium from the heatsink. And I've got to remove this to pop it in the case. And then it must be this way around. Yeah, because the fan is at the top. And then I guess we're making sure we seat all of this. Yeah, that seats nicely. And then screwing in through the bottom here. Yeah, that's all gone together nicely. And uh, there's no noise if you shake it around. It's all in there very solid and all the connections are nice and accessible. And also it's got a hanger so you could use a couple of screws and hang it up on the back of a monitor or uh, on a wall or somewhere. I can see these used in commercial applications quite a lot. There you go. So all in, all in place. Looks pretty decent. I've got some rubber feet. I'm not going to put them on because I had an idea about these for another video. So I'm going to use that for something else. But obviously it makes sense to put the rubber feet on. So I'm going to boot this from Raspberry Pi OS. The micro SD slot is here and uh, it's actually pretty easy to get a card in, but the card is flush when it's in. So it is pretty difficult to get it out. I can't get it out because I've only just cut my nails. But if I use a small flat screwdriver and because micro SD cards have that little tiny edge, 
So you can flip it out that way and you can see that's risen and I can get it out now. A good security feature. So I'm gonna shut down Twister and uh, plug all this in. I'm gonna use Raspberry Pi OS because it's the standard operating system. So let's start transferring all these across. Well, I'm not gonna use the three and a half mil audio initially. I'm gonna see what happens. So let's let that boot up. Okay, so I've updated the system and uh, I've also updated PyApps and PyKiss as well because I figured that maybe one of those has some of these audio apps in it and it's just an easier way of getting to it. Uh, you can see the temperature is 49, 50 degrees. I would imagine this is overclocked, this one. Let's have a look. Type in NeoFetch and I'm running at 2.3. Or the passive heatsink, I think I'm going to lower that. So let's uh, edit the config.txt. So sudo nano boot config.txt. And let's have a look and see what this is running at. Yeah, 2200. So I think I'm going to drop down to 2000 maybe. And where's the over voltage? Over voltage was set to 8. I'm going to go down to 6. Probably could go down to four, but I'm going to leave it as it is. And I'm going to hash out this fan uh, because I'm not, not sure if it's going to affect anything else because obviously I'm using some of the GPIO pins. Press the right button. So control X, yes, enter, and then reboot. So let's first have a look in PyKiss and see if there's anything uh, to do with these audio apps that they recommend in here. So I've got multimedia. Okay, none of those are on the list. So let's try Pi Apps. Okay, so multimedia. Okay, so none of them in multimedia. It's always a good thing though to check Pi Apps and Pi Kiss because it is just a super easy way of installing things. It's all automated. So I'm gonna have a look at the official website for say something like OSMC because I've had that before. Here we go, go to the download section and here we've got Raspberry Pi. Oh, it doesn't say Raspberry Pi 4, that's a bit weird. Okay, we've got Raspberry Pi. Okay, so it only has Raspberry Pi 1, 2, 3, 3 plus and 0. It's a bit of a surprise. I'm sure I've used OMC, OSMC before. So let's try something else. What's this Mood Audio Player? I've never, I've never seen anything on that before. Audio, there's so many options on the Pi. Mood Audio Player, Audio File, Quality Music Playback from the Raspberry Pi. Looks like a nice interface. So let's click on Download Mood. That is a long feature list. Okay, so that download is finished now, so I can, uh, well, let's just try writing it with Raspberry Pi Imager. I'm sure that'll work. So accessories and Imager. Need to pop a micro SD card, so I put one in the USB adapter and I'm putting it in the back of the Pi so you'll see it show up. There you go, it's come up with various different things on there. Let's close that down. Loads of partitions. Uh, so choose OS, use custom. and it was Mood. So 1.45 gig, open, choose storage. That's my 32 gig card that I've just put in and hit write, and yes. Okay, so I've shut down Raspberry Pi OS, which was on the SD card. So let's eject that. And I've written Mood Audio to this micro SD card. So let's take that out and we're gonna boot from that micro SD card. So switch on. Okay, so this is how it starts up. And for some reason it changes to this grey screen uh, and doesn't seem to do anything. So I played around with it for quite a while and I found out that if I pressed Alt F4 that would take me back to this and it wants me to log in. The username is Pi and the password is M -O, o D E Audio. There you go. So that takes you to this screen. Uh, and then I figured type in Start X because uh, a lot of things start up like that. So Start X and then it boots into a proper operating system with a graphical user interface. But audio-wise, if I use the red and white connections on the back, I don't get any audio through my speaker. Um, but uh, at the moment, I've got a 3.5 mil jack going from my capture card uh, because it is sending audio through HDMI by default, which kind of makes sense. Uh, so if I was to pick a station, you can hear the audio coming through obviously I can't play very much of it because of copyright reasons um, but uh, I need to change the audio output to tell it which output stage to come from uh, and that's done uh, I had to look this up but there's a menu here so I need to click on the M click on configure click on audio 
and at the top here it's the name device bit that I need. So if I click on that and scroll down, so I'm going to try RPI DAC even though I don't know if that's the one because it's called DACPI really, but let's try that. So I'm going to choose set across my fingers because I haven't, oh there you go, restart required. After restart, edit chip options and or driver options. Well, let's see if it works. So if I do Alt F4 and pseudo power off. And here you can see I've plugged my Bose speaker into the two phono connections now. Uh, I've got volume control as zero on here. So if I press uh, play on one of these, so absolute hot, it will start to play. Yeah, it says it's playing here, uh, summer 91. And uh, now I need to change the audio, so I don't know how, yeah, just click on that, and then I guess I can, is there a way, can I drag this around? <laughs> okay, that works. <laughs> That's a bit loud. So that was very loud on this speaker, so definitely that output stage is much louder than the Raspberry Pi one, and obviously it's going to be a lot better quality as well. Right, I need to try this on something else. Okay, so this is my TV setup, uh, which is basically an Apple TV uh, box in the background there going through some HomePods. Uh, but I discovered a while back, uh, and I did a separate video on this, so if you want it explained, uh, I'll, I'll put a link in the description to that video. But basically, I can put analog audio through the back of my TV into the phono sockets. That then is turned into an arc signal and sent out to the speakers, and that's via the Apple TV in this case. But if you've got a normal soundbar, you could use this exact same method to send an analog signal through your soundbar, even if you haven't got an analog signal on your soundbar. So what I need to do is start playing that track and then switch the input so the audio will come out of my HomePod. So if I press space on my keyboard, that should start the track playing. You can see the track's playing, but you can't hear it yet. But if I put it on the AV socket, so that means the analog connection's going into the AV on my TV. And now you can hear it coming through. and I can pause it with the keyboard. Okay, so overall, really pleased with the results from this. Uh, I really like the case, it's very, very simple, but the audio quality seems really good so far. In the limited tests that I've done, uh, I haven't tried any high-res audio yet, so it'll be interesting to try that, maybe with some decent headphones, uh, and try that headphone output stage, because I haven't tried that as well. But uh, yeah, I hope this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.